In this series, I address your questions about self-harm. It's a tricky topic, but I want us to talk more about it. If I haven't answered your question yet, leave it in a comment below and I will attempt to address it in a future video. Mrs H31 asked an interesting question via Instagram. She wanted to know how can we both look after the needs of a young person who's self-harming but also all the other young people as well and this is really important because sometimes we get so lost in thinking about how do we manage the needs of the person who is engaging in self-harm that we forget that actually we've got a duty of care to the whole class, to the whole year, to the whole school. Now actually though the most important thing we need to do is make sure that our staff are trained up and they can recognise the warning signs of self-harm, that they're able to listen non-judgmentally if a young person chooses to open up to them and they know what are the correct policies and procedures to follow if a young person is self-harming or they suspect that they might be. We also need to let our young people know, look we know that self-harm is a common issue amongst young people, if this is something that's affecting you or you're worried about a friend you can talk to us, we will listen non-judgmentally and we will help to provide the support that's needed. It's really important that you're able to have that open and honest communication with your children, with your staff and with parents. Students need to know who to talk to, staff need to know who to refer on to, this needs to be something that we're not scared of talking about. That's the most important thing, open honest lines of communication.